welcome back to Katrina's Creations Knitting Podcast. This is episode 43. If you are a new viewer, thank you for stopping by. And if you enjoy it, please click the subscribe button below. If you're a returning viewer, thanks again for coming back. And give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Um, my name is Katrina, as I've said, and this is primarily a knitting podcast, although I do do spinning and some weaving, which I haven't shown yet, but I do some weaving and um, I attempt sewing. I'm not real good at it, but I do try to attempt at it. Um, if you notice, the background's a little different today. The reasoning is uh, it's nice outside and the light coming in is a little bit better than it normally is. And I found that the colors from the, the yarns and things were showing up a little bit better with an angle this direction. Plus it doesn't give me glare around my eyeglasses. So we're going to get just like jump in and get started. I'm wearing the Yexa shawl. I finished it this week and I will take it off to show you. I really like this shawl. It is a nice length and a nice depth. I don't like really long shawls that hang halfway down my back. And this is long enough that um, it's probably, I'd say five and a half to six feet wide. So the wingspan is, is pretty good. It's, it's wider than my wingspan is. So it wraps around your neck nice, but you could wear it around your shoulders. I'll show you. You could wear it around your shoulders and still have plenty hanging around to like tie in the front. So it's nice, but it's not real deep as well. So it's a really nice sized shawl. Uh, the pattern is, it calls for a two color shawl. I did mine in three colors because I had three fall colors that I really wanted to use. So let me hold this up close so you can, use, you can see it. This color was from Koi Gu. They don't have colors, they just have numbers. Um, but it's, it's kind of a green and a brown and it has some orange in it. This is Araucania and it is a, um, it is a nubble yarn, so it has a little bit of silk in it, and it's in tonal browns. And then this color down here is also a um, Koi Gu color, and it is like a tonal pumpkin color, and it has a little bit of green in it, like right in here. So um, here is the whole shawl, and here's the, the multicolor with the greens down the bottom. It was a very easy knit. It was a very fast knit. I think I got it done in less than two weeks, probably about a week and a half. And I really do enjoy it. The pattern is from the Yarn and You Girl. Uh, she has a podcast as well. The pattern is called the Yexa Shawl. And here's the pattern. Her name's Janine McCarty. The pattern is available on Ravelry. It's for $5. And um, yeah, check it out. It only requires uh, like 500 yards so it does knit up really really fast and you use fairly large needles you use size 8 US needles with it so um yeah it's it's a fast knit it's an easy knit and I really like the shape of it so thank you Janine and the uh, winner from last week of the giveaway for that shawl pattern um, has come forward her name is Jaslyn and yes she already claimed her prize so um, I'm excited to see what color she ends up uh, doing it in. So Jaslyn, if you're watching, when you finish it, make sure you post a picture. I would love to see what it looks like. So uh, I really played yarn chicken when I made this. Uh, like I said, it calls for 500 yards and I cut it close. I really did cut it close by doing it in three colors. This is the one Koi Gu. This is the pumpkin color one. It looks a little neon-y, but it's, it's definitely more pumpkin colored. There you can see it a little better. That's all I have left of this. And this is all I have left of the others. This is the multicolored other Koi Gu that's with the greens. There is probably less than a gram left. And here's the brown. Yeah, there's maybe, maybe five grams here. Maybe a little more. But this, yeah, definitely one gram. So um, that will eventually end up in my cozy memory blanket. When I get to the point where I have to put colors together to try to make squares, that's where that's going to come in. So that is my finished object for the week. And now I will jump into some projects that I'm working on. I have several things on the needles right now. So if you remember last week, I mentioned 
this particular book that I was using for a pattern. This is Top Down Sweaters by Magine, uh, Doreen McCourt. Doreen McCourt. And here's the sweater, a little bit better picture of it. It is a top down, so you actually knit the yoke first and I've completed the yoke and now I'm working on the body which is the section in here and you actually pick up stitches and then you knit across and down to do for those and I'll show you where I'm at with that I was using if you remember a couple weeks ago I had some knitology yarn that I got from Knit Crate that I wasn't overly crazy about this is what it really looks like and this is true to color this is it's called groovy um, I guess <laughs> it has lots of orange and gold and brown in it and then it's got some blue and green just thrown in although it's it's not that those of you who grew up in the 70s you know what I'm talking about when I say avocado this is avocado this doesn't have avocado in it I don't remember a lot of these colors from the 70s I remember the gold and the avocado in fact we had an avocado kitchen my mom had an avocado kitchen with the appliances matching of course um, and I remember the Brady Bunch had orange countertops. So, and my next door neighbors actually had orange carpet and orange countertops. So some of these colors, and we had gold shag carpet in our house that was right about the same color as gold as what I'm going to be doing the body of this sweater in. So I will match. Um, here I am with this. Like I said, I've finished the yoke and it is top down. So you're going to kind of see this upside down a little bit. This is the back. Now remember think upside down. So the bottom here is actually the neck and here at the top you can see where I have attached the gold. So you can see it's going to go really really well with it. It's got this exact same color of gold within these colors. So what I have on the stitch holders right now that's with these big uh, safety safety pin looking things. You can't even see them. I've got so many stitches on them but these safety pin looking things this is holding the front and the yoke or the um, not the yoke the the front and the sleeves because the sleeves are going to come you're going to pick up stitches and knit right off of those as well so they are held on stitch holders on both sides at this point so what you're seeing here is the back is the next section I knit and I just dropped a stitch marker oh well I'll find it so that is, like I said, it's upside down. So let's see if I can hold this up so it looks right. Maybe not. I'm going to lose all of my stitch markers, but that's okay. That's the front. This is where the neck is, right along the top. So that's the back and the bottom. So you can really see the colors are going to look nice, I think. So I'm very pleased with that. And the part of the yarn that I have left, this, is just enough to do... Uh, around the collar and down the button band and it might not show up so much like around the, the yoke other than the stitches will be running the opposite direction but I think up against the gold going down the body it's really gonna it's it's gonna really um, make it pop a little bit give a little color to it so that's what I'm saving this bit yarn a bit of yarn for this is the second skein so I went through all the way through one of them I think there was a total of 350 yards it is worsted weight and it's knitting up on size 7 needles so it is going pretty quick and it's all garter stitch I mean there is um, you have to make some stitches you have to pick up some stitches in it but for the most part it is all garter stitch so it is going quick and it's something I don't have to concentrate a whole lot on uh, especially you know once you get into just going back and forth on the body so it should go pretty quick and I'm hoping to get it done in time for our vacation so that is my first project I've got on the needles then if you remember a few weeks ago I finished a shawl that I designed uh, called Banner Unfurled I've made it several times I've made it twice for myself and then I made one for my daughter-in-law which I did in a lace weight and it was almost a micro lace it took me forever to knit because I was using I think size two or two and a half needles something like that I'm not doing that again so this one is for my daughter here's what the pattern looks like it is available on Ravelry it is a four dollar pattern but if you use the coupon code KC20 it'll give you 20% off so you'll get the pattern for three dollars and twenty cents 
It's a three color shawl. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I've talked about it before and I don't want to like bore you to death. But this was the first one I made in the red, white, and blue. And then I went made one in turquoise. If you go to the project page, uh, you'll see some colors other people have done it in. And the one I made for my daughter-in-law was done in like blues and grays. My daughter wanted pink and gray, which surprised me because she was not into pink when she was younger. She did not like pastel colors. But now she's decided she wants it in pink. So I'm using the micro lace yarn. Um, however, I'm holding it double. I thought originally I would hold it triple because let's see if I can hold this so you can see how very, very fine this is. Uh, there we go. It is super, super fine. It's almost um, like a lace weight, which you would use for, I mean, it is lace weight, but it's, it's almost as fine as what you would use to make very, very fine doilies. So um, yeah, a little thinner than I wanted to deal with. So I'm doubling it. And this is how far I've gotten so far. If it looks a little scrunchy up, it has to be blocked. Once it's blocked, all this will come out. So it has stripes that go up. I haven't gotten into the third color yet. So, and it has some lace work in it. I'll hold it a little closer so you can see it. There's the stripes. It's a lot of garter stitch and a lot of just yarn overs to create the lace. So, yeah, that's it for my, all these strings that are hanging off are all ones that get uh, woven in at the end. So that is the one for my daughter. So I've been working on that. And then I've been designing, where did I put it? Oh, here we go. I've been designing a shawl. And if you were talk, watching the episode last week, I ripped the entire thing out after I had gotten probably about this far along. I had about maybe two feet of the shawl done and I just didn't like it. I didn't like how narrow it was looking. It looked like a giant finger. It just, I just didn't, I wasn't happy with it at all. I had, I think six pages of notes and I ripped the entire thing out, shredded up all the notes. So this is the new and improved version. It's the same colors. Um, I just changed the shape of the shawl a little bit. So now it is going to be a shawl that's going to actually form a right angle. So this is all garter in here and it has some yarn overs along the edge and then it has some textured work here and each section that goes up it's going to be a gradient it's going to have different colors it's going to actually go to a, a deep gold at the very end um, so it's going to be sort of gradient but you could do it in any colors you want to do it in and um, yeah so each pattern the, the the texture and the pattern is going to change each time it moves up the shawl so yep, that's how far I've gotten so far. It's about 10 inches. So I've been working on that. And this has been living in my Stitch and You bag. I won this from the Yarn and You Girl podcast, uh, but this is available on Rat or on Etsy. And it is Stitch and You bags. So really cute with the little tea, tea kettles and teacups and it's got cakes and stuff on the back too. So it's really cute. It's the very first zipper bag I've ever had and it has a little a little teapot progress keeper right here which is cute. So um, that's what I've been working on with that and then um, I had Kathy contacted me and was wondering she had questions about decreasing on uh, the mitered um, different mitered squares. So I had designed a dishcloth pattern and this is for free. You can go online and get this. It is on Ravelry. It is the mitered lace dishcloth. And I would show you the original, but I've been using I've been using them so they're not as pretty anymore. They're not this they're not this pretty color blue. It kind of washed out from use and some of them are just downright gross right now, so I'm not going to show those to you. But I have a couple that I made for my mother. She doesn't know it yet, so mom, if you're watching, just close your eyes for a minute. Um, I made her 
So she's dog sitting for us when we go on vacation. So these are like a thank you for dog watching for us. So this is in black and gray. And it's the same pattern. It does you can't see the yarn overs real well, but there are three sets of yarn overs in it. So there's the one, and the other one's identical. There we go. So I'm going to do a tutorial on how to do the decreases as well as the yarn overs. And the decreases work on um, some of the other mitered projects that are out there, do very similar, if not the same type of decrease, they do similar decreases. So I am going to put a tutorial up and I'm going to insert it um, right at, at, in just a minute. But uh, it is going to also be showing up, if you are my subscriber, you're going to see it show up again as a standalone video because I'm also going to attach it to the pattern. So anyone who got the pattern, if they're not one of my subscribers and they have questions, they can pull up just the tutorial without having to look at my video. I hope they would look at my video, but just in case they don't, they can just look at the tutorial. Um, so it is going to be a standalone. So if you are a subscriber, you're going to see this video show up as new and you're also going to see the tutorial show up as new, but they're the same thing. They're just going to One's going to be by itself and one's going to be on this particular video. So I'm going to insert the, insert the tutorial right here. Hi, I'm Katrina from Katrina's Creations Knitting Podcast, and I'm here to show you a tutorial on a dishcloth pattern that I designed. The pattern is for free. It is called Mitered Lace Dishcloth. It is available on Ravelry for free. It's a very simple garter stitch with some yarn overs, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about it and how to do the decreases. Uh, they're very simple to do, but just in case you're not familiar with them, I'm putting the video up. So to talk to begin, we're going to show you what kind of yarn uh, to use. You have to use 100% cotton for any dishcloth or washcloth that you make. If you buy, this is the Sugar and Cream by Lilies. If you buy this version, which is called the Super Size, it has, uh, where is it at? It's 85 grams or three ounces. It's equivalent to 150 yards. You will get three dishcloths out of this size because each dishcloth, it uses just slightly under 50 grams per dishcloth. So if you buy this one, it's 150 yards, you'll get three and you'll have a little bit left over. Not enough to make another dishcloth, but just a little bit that is left over. Um, some other yarns that I have used, the one I'm going to be demonstrating with, uh, because it's solid colored, I thought it would show up better. Here's what I'm going to be demonstrating with. This is also, like I said, 100% cotton. This is Nova Plus Four Seasons cotton yarn. And there are uh, 50 grams or 82 yards in this. So um, I'll probably get one dishcloth and a little bit left over. So that is the type of yarn that you need to use. Like I said, it could be any brand. It just needs to be worsted weight 100% cotton for any washcloth or dishcloth you would make, whether it's my pattern or someone else's pattern. Um, in order to make it absorbent so that it works really well, you want it to be 100% cotton. So that being said, I'll get to the tutorial. All right, the pattern calls for 53 stitches. What you're basically doing when you make a mitered square is you're zipping up the center. So it's going to start as a long line of stitches like this. And your center decreases, which are going to take place here, actually zip up the square. So it's going to pull the edges in and create your square. So as I said, this has 53 stitches, which I've already cast on. The center stitch out of 53, you're going to divide it by two, which would be 26 and you have one left over. The one that is left over is your center stitch and then you're going to want a stitch on each side of that center stitch. So as the pattern calls for you're going to knit across 25. So I've already done that. I've knitted to the 25th stitch 
And now I've got three stitches in the center. They are right here. This one is the center stitch. These two are the side. You are going to, I'm going to get this nice and close. You are going to slip one stitch so you don't knit it. You just simply slip it from your left to your right needle. You're going to slip a second stitch from the left to the right needle. Then you're going to knit your third stitch right here. And then you're going to take the two stitches that you knitted, that you slipped over. You're going to pick them up with your left needle and you're going to pass them over top of the knitted stitch and off the other side. It is now created one stitch from three. And then you're going to continue to knit the rest of the way across. I'm going to show you and show it to you one more time. Uh, we'll just do it in the middle of the row just so you can see what I'm doing. You're going to slip one stitch from the left to the right, slip the next stitch from the left to the right, and then you're going to knit the next stitch. So you now have three stitches over here, two that you slipped and one that you knitted. You're going to pick up the two that you slipped and you're going to pass them over top of the stitch that you knitted. You've decreased by two. This is what forms the zipper going up the center of the mitered square. Now I'm going to get to the back of the next row so I can show you what to do on, on the wrong side of your knitting. All right, we are now coming up to the wrong side. I'm actually knitting on the wrong side. You can see the point forming here. This is the back. You're going to knit all the way across. Whenever you come to this center stitch, which is where your decreases are, you purl and then you knit the rest of the way across. So let me get to that stitch and I will show it to you up close. Here's that center stitch. You're going to bring your yarn to the front. You're going to purl that stitch. Then bring it right back to the back and continue knitting. Now let me show you the front of how it's looking right now because this, like I said, is the back. On the front, you can see this section here is where it is starting to form basically the zipper. I'll show it to you on a larger one that is completed. On this pattern here, this is the wrong side. Down here is where the pearls are. The rest is all knit. On this right side, this is where the zipper forms. You can't see it as well. There we go. I'll get it a little bit closer. You can see the zipper basically right here. So you start, like I said, from the, the ends here with 53 stitches. And as you decrease, each, each row is going to decrease in the number of knitted stitches because you're decreasing two stitches for every time you come up here. And it actually closes this up like a zipper would like zip from this end to this end. So by the time you get to this end here, you are only doing just a very, very few stitches. And the back is always purled when you hit the middle stitch there. So that is what it'll look like for that. Now I'm going to show you how to do the yarn overs and they don't show up real well with the variegated colors. But there's a yarn over stripe here, here, and here. Every five rows has a yarn over. So let me show you how to do that. A yarn over stitch, and I'm just going to do this in the middle of the row rather than starting a whole row over. You're just going to bring your yarn to the center 
in the front between the two needles. And then you will knit two stitches, not purl. You will knit two stitches. I'll go in here. I'm going to pick those two stitches up right here and knit. You're going to bring this yarn. It's in the front. It's going to go to the back and around the needle. This is a very simple yarn over stitch. And when you do this, the yarn over is what forms a hole. And you can see the hole it's going to form right here, right there. And in order to keep your stitches the same, if I didn't do the, the knit two together on this side, you would end up with additional stitches because this would act as an increase. So usually if you want to keep your stitches, so your stitch count the same, when you do a yarn over, you're going to have knit two together immediately following that in order to keep the stitches the same. So I'll do that one more time. You're going to see, bring it real close, bring the yarn to the front between the two needles. Then you're going to knit two stitches together. It's just the same as if you were knitting one stitch, but you're going to knit two. And the yarn is coming from the front instead of from the back. You're going to yarn, you're going to wrap it around the needles, go over the top, just as you would any other knit stitch. You're just doing two stitches at the same time. And again, it forms the hole right here. When you come back, on the back side, you're just going to knit straight across these. You're just going to treat that yarn over as if it is any other stitch. And you're just going to knit until you get to the center stitch, which gets purled. So that's all it is. It's a very easy pattern. And as I said earlier in the tutorial, I have a knitting podcast. It's called Katrina's Creations Knitting Podcast. I'd love to have you stop by and check it out. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay, I hope you found that tutorial helpful. And uh, the last couple things that I'm going to share with you, I have a couple of acquisitions. They are not yarn this time. There's some patterns that I got for free out on the internet and I thought I would share them with you. Uh, the first one, it's actually two different patterns. The first one is one that I saw last year when my husband and I went up to um, New England for vacation, we stopped at Love to Knit in uh, East Greenwich, Rhode Island, and uh, they have a podcast. It's called The Yarn Shop Girls, so they're one of my favorite podcasts, so if you check them out, they're a lot of fun, and um, that's the store that I walked in and, and like knocked over their mannequin. I know how to make an entrance, what can I say? But anyway, they had this shawl hanging in the like the showcase when you walked in it was hanging in the front window and I asked Marissa what it was and she said it's called Terraform so I've been meaning to print it out and it's taken me a year to get around to it but I finally got around to printing it out and there isn't a real big picture of it but let me see if I can get it close enough this is a free pattern and it's it's written kind of interesting if you look closely at the pattern um, you'll see there's like lines going through it that is created by dropped stitches. Um, some of us like me like accidentally drop stitches. This one you intentionally drop stitches. What you do is you actually put yarn overs on that you then release off the needles and it cause, it creates a dropped stitch. Uh, but she, the lady who wrote this and her name is Sherry McEwen, McEwen, Sherry McEwen. Um, she wrote the pattern two ways. You could do it with the drop stitches or without the drop stitches. And it's pretty interesting how she wrote it. She has a written pattern, you know, which is just like your typed version. But she also has put, um, if you are a chart person, some people, I can do either. I don't have really a preference one way or the other. But some people specifically like charts as opposed to written. So she has a chart in here too. Um, and she has written it, like I said, for the yarn over or without the yarn over. So it would cause, I mean, I myself, when I do it, I'm going to put the drop stitches. I've never done drop stitches before, and I really would like to see what it looks like. Um, here is the shawl laid out. It's kind of small, so it's not, 
the pictures in the in the pattern are not real real big so you can't see them but I've seen the pattern you know on its own and it is really really pretty so again it is called terraform it's a free pattern on Ravelry it calls for 600 yards I believe I think I looked at this one 600 yards of fingering or sock weight um, the only thing they she recommends you not use is fibers like mohair because when you do the drop stitches they're not going to drop real well because mohair tends to um, it has a lot of barbs in it not like it's it's not scratchy but wool has barbs in it and it will grab and so mohair is very grabby and uh, so you don't want to use that if you're going to do the drop stitch version of this so um, yeah it uses a US 6 size needle and 600 yards so I'm not sure what yarn I'm going to do with this if I'm going to use some from my stash or if I'm going to um, buy some on vacation you know I can never have enough yarn so I'm not sure but that's one pattern that I got the other one one of the other podcasters that I like to watch is cozy up with the stitching sisters and they're a lot of fun it's four sisters and three of them are the ones that are normally on the podcast and they also are designers and um, they are actually offered one of their patterns for free this month so I went online mm, excuse me so I went online this is called the Christine button cowl it's only for a limited time that she is offering it for free but isn't that beautiful the buttons on it are non-functional buttons they're more for looks so I was like well if you didn't want to do buttons you could put a really pretty brooch there or something like that so it just literally slips over your head and it's done with chunky yarn so it is super super fast and you do it with huge needles um, it only calls for hundred and sixty yards of super bulky yarn it's um, size six weight if you go by the weights and let me see what size needles I know they're big I saw them knitting it the other day and it was big needles US 17s so yeah it's a huge 12 millimeter needles or US 17s so yeah it's huge it's gonna be a fast knit I don't have any super bulky yarn but I'm thinking if I took some yarn and held it together I could maybe get some super bulky yarn so um, that might be an option or that might be something else I buy on vacation yes I'm getting my wish list I always go on vacation with the wish list and I also take samples of things I want to match to things I already have like if I have some yarn that I know is not enough to do anything with but I want to combine it with something I'll cut like a small section of that yarn and I put it in a little book and I take it with me and when I walk into the yarn shop I can compare it to make sure that the texture the fiber I also write down what the fiber is so that when I go into a yarn shop I can buy like with like so that my fibers all match so um, yeah there's the two free patterns that I found this week that I really thought were fun and the last thing I was going to, to share was Gail was watching our uh, the pom-pom tutorial last week and she put in the comments that she had watched a blog and on the blog to tie the uh, pom-poms together tight enough so that the um, little strands you know once you cut them the little fringe pieces don't fall out I was tying it with a piece of the yarn from the yarn I was making the pom-pom out of um, but if you have problems tying it tight enough she had heard that you could use number 10 um, cotton crochet now cotton crochet yarn I thought I would show you just in case you aren't sure what it is you can buy it at Joann's you can buy it any place pretty much Walmart carries it it's it is this stuff that you see it's very thin they make doilies out of it I don't know that this is size number 10 I'm not positive because the labels missing but um, I think it's close but it would give you the idea but I can see how that would work because a lot of times some of the yarn depending on what the fiber is that you've made into a pom-pom can be a little slippy if it's got some acrylic in it um, the wool if it's wool it'll grab really nice but if it's got silk in it or if it's got um, some of your like fibers uh, that are like plant-based some of those like bamboo and stuff don't have a whole lot of grab to them they might slip and then you would have pieces of your pom-pom like you know 
Can you imagine walking around with a hat and having pieces of it falling off it, leaving a trail of pom-pom behind you? So this was a suggestion, and I think it would really work. I haven't tried it yet, but it does make sense that it would. So it's, the like I said, the cotton yarn. If you've got um, butcher's twine, it would probably do very much the same thing. So um, that would work with it as well. So that was the ideas that were shared. And I do appreciate it when my viewers share different ideas and tips. I think that's wonderful. And I enjoy chatting back and forth with all of you. So if you leave comments, I will talk back. I'm a very talkative person, just in case you didn't get that. Um, so if you chat, I chat back. Um, in fact, over on Ravelry, Diane sent me a really nice message. And Diane, thank you. That made my day. It was really encouraging. And um, I feel like you guys are my knitting friends. I really do. It's like um, I have to keep remembering. Sometimes I start talking on the, the camera and recording stuff and then I'll forget that it hasn't been uploaded yet and I'm like huh I wonder why nobody's wrote me yet and it's like oh that would be because I'm still editing the video and haven't even put it up nobody else has seen it yet I forget that you know I know it sounds it sounds a little crazy but if you produce videos you'll understand what I mean you you sometimes lose track of what you filmed and what is actually uploaded and released for people to watch so um and it doesn't take much to confuse me because I'm having pre-senior moments. So I will be I will be 55 in the end of November. So um, I guess there's some benefits. I guess I can order off the 55 plus menu items and not feel guilty because I order off of them already. I figure the gray hair I do something. So you know the 55 and plus off the menu items. Yes. What can I say? I, it's why pay more I can get it cheaper so um and my husband teases me and says there's cheap plastered on my forehead so maybe if nothing else with turning 55 I will get some of the like senior benefits at restaurants there's got to be a plus side to getting older somewhere along the line although my mother tells me that the golden years are only golden for the doctors I'm beginning to think that's right that there's nothing golden about the golden years so um and my parents are 78 so uh yeah yeah, so we've been laughing a lot about that this week. Because so my mother said she's finally letting her hair grow out. She's kept it dyed for years, and now she's finally... I hope I don't get in trouble for sharing that. But anyway, she said she's finally letting it grow out just gradually. Um, so um, I was like, oh, good, you'll match me. Because I, I dyed my hair till I was... I went gray at 30, and I dyed my hair till I turned 50. And finally, every time it would grow out and the white would start showing across here, I looked like a skunk. Because I had mousy brown hair. And so, yeah. So I finally gave up. So, uh, yeah. So now my mom will match me and she will not look like my sister anymore because my mom has the young genes. I didn't inherit those. My mother and my grandmother, neither of them. I mean, my grandmother's passed away. But when she passed away and she was like 92 years old, she could have passed for being in her 70s. It's just not fair. I didn't get those genes. Yeah. So, oh, well can't have everything. So thanks again, everybody, for watching this week. And um, I will talk to you again next week. And like I said before, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you click the little subscribe button, you will get a notification anytime these videos post. And they usually post on Saturdays. So thanks again for watching. Bye. Have a great week.